The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Coming up on Life Today, spend Wednesdays in the Word with Bible teacher Beth Moore as she explains how church culture can hinder your spiritual walk. We are so overstimulated in our culture. We are numb. You tell me today that what we're not really looking for from God is just to feel something again. Recognizing our need to stop pretending that we've got what we're looking for and to hunger and thirst for God. Welcome to Life Today. It is such a joy to be able to share this time with you. Beth Moore is about to, uh, to share from the Awaken Now conference. I think most of you know, unless you've just tuned in, I'm James Robinson. This is Life Today. And it is just a privilege to be able to talk to you and to share someone as gifted as Beth Moore. This is actually a teaching that she delivered at our 50th anniversary conference. Now think about this because this is kind of unusual in our day. Betty and I will soon be married 53 years. I have been in ministry actually going on now more than 53 years. And uh, we celebrated that. And here, here's the thing. The five or 6,000 people that attended that conference for several days and then got the videotapes and the teaching said, we have never been so blessed. No way for us to describe it. And you could tell. And the, the, really the theme of the conference was awakening now that we need to put off the unfruitful works of darkness and put on light and really pierce the darkness with transforming truth. And I think you can see that. There is what seems to be impenetrable darkness, but you don't curse the darkness. You just turn on the light and it dispels the darkness. Well, Beth Moore knows how to challenge us to really seek to live in the power of the Holy Spirit Jesus Christ indwelling us so that the world will see the Father and he will be glorified because of the life we live in the power of the Holy Spirit. Here's Beth Moore. Be blessed. blatant messages, life messages that James and Betty bring into any environment they get to serve is the unity of the body of Christ. Regardless of what he's not talking about uniformity, us coming together as the body of Christ, knowing that we are saved by Christ alone and we have put our trust in him, that makes us brothers and sisters. And it is not until we come together that we even realize what God is doing because we get so isolated in all of our corners. But when we come together, and the bits and pieces of what God is doing all over the world to go to another country and go, what is this he is doing? What is this marvel? And it gives us courage and we come back together and we put it all together. We come back together and we see that and know and consider and understand only the hand of the Lord could have done this. Only the Holy One of Israel could create this. Only He. Here is the thing. Did you notice with me that it says, when the poor and needy. See, here is the prerequisite. This is, this is all we got. Is that He is calling us to own our thirst and to come to Him as those who are poor and needy. In His economy, it is the needy who receive. It is the way he does it. Only the barren miraculously conceive. I mean, do we want something that we could plan and put together with our godliest efforts, with our, our big teams, the big players all come together and let's, let's plan a move of God. It does not work that way. It takes us saying, we're poor and needy. We're desperate for you to work. We cannot do it on our own. We are barren, Lord. And when we come to him barren, that's when we miraculously 
conceive over and over again? Do we want what can be conceived by our good and godly planning? Or do we want something that can only be conceived by the Holy Spirit? I believe if we stay apart, I believe in that togetherness, we see and understand and consider the hand of the Lord has done this, but apart, we will not see this downpour. We're so spread out that a drop is falling here and a drop is falling here until the body of Christ unites. It will be scattered showers on planet Earth. But once we unite in common purpose to see salvation to the ends of the earth through the great name of the Lord Jesus Christ, now we're talking. Now we're talking. All we have to do is own our thirst. All we have to do is say to him, nothing else will do. I want you to pray with me, and we're going to pray it tonight that God would begin working in such a way in all sorts of streams and traditions throughout Christianity that he would pick out key people and that he would cause them to have such a hunger they cannot stand but to cry out to God to do it for them. Their people are parched with thirst. What would happen if we begin praying, God, go throughout Christendom into every denomination, every single sector, every single part all over the world? Go in, go in, because here is what I believe with all of my heart. I think there are exceptions to this, but I think this is the general rule. I believe that influence often comes from the outside. But transformation comes from the inside. You can almost take that one to the biblical bank because if transformation is something that comes from within. We need to pray that key people throughout all of these different traditions in Christianity, that it will go, that it happens within. People still have trouble trusting someone or do not see themselves identifying with them if they're always from the outside coming in. It takes people within those moves, within those traditions, within those streams. You and I want to pray that key people throughout every single branch of Christianity get hungry. Where nothing else will do but the spirit of the living God. Oh, that the honored would say, I am poor and thirsty. I'm just going to let that fall a second. What would happen if the honored men and women said, I'm just going to be honest with you, I'm dying of thirst. I'm telling you, I do not know how I can manage another year of ministry if God does not come through afresh for me. What would happen? What would happen? I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. I want to own it. I told him here recently, I'm desperate for it. I'm desperate for it. I'll even stop telling you how to bring a downpour. I'll stop turning in my nose to you and go, this is how I really think it would work. I'm, I'm tired of telling you how to do it. Just do it. Do it. But I want my eyes to see it. I want my eyes to see it. I know he can do more than this. I know he can. But we're not poor and needy yet. All it would take is for us to own our thirst, because I, I think we really are thirsty. And when a hungry people persist in appearing full, there exists no provision of food. When a parched people persist in appearing wet with the Spirit, there exists no promise of water. Our persistent playing, I believe, is part of the Spirit's delaying. We just keep playing with the thing. You and I both know it. We're starving. We want something more. We know there's something more, and we want it with everything we've got in us. But we will not admit it because we are afraid for people that we think are lesser spiritual, spiritually than we are to see our need. When honored people will come and drop down and say, I am starving here. I'm thirsty here. Lord, give it, only you can give it. I believe that out of his
his great mercy, God is about to push this envelope with us. Now, listen, please test the spirit. I want you to pray about this and see if this is so, but it's clearly as I know how to discern what he laid upon my heart, I feel like I am bringing it to you as, as I understand it. But I think what we will see, if not now, very, very soon, is him pushing this point with us over and over because I think it's very possible that what has satisfied you before will no longer satisfy you now. That how you've been doing the Christian thing and the ministry thing and the, all, the thing that has been working for years, decades, maybe your pastors and teachers and, you, and, or your, 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 um, your uh, in evangelism, whatever it may be, that you've sought him and you have loved him and you've gone on. I mean, it's worked for years. I want to ask you a question. Is there any chance that just here lately you've kind of wanted to admit something it's not working like it used to. Would anybody own that? Something, something. And see, you know what? Sometimes it's just like our lack, like we've just gotten lax somehow. But I, I just want to suggest to you that it may not necessarily be that. It may not be an accident at all and it may not be chalked up just to personal weakness as weak as we are. Sometimes God will stir a sense of lack when he wants to give us more. I think I can say to you that what has worked for you before may not work for you very soon. What yielded results before will not yield the same results now. It is a new day. Look at one another and say it's a new day. <laughs> and yesterday's outpouring is not going to carry us today. It's not going to do it. I believe he's going to push this with us because I believe that we're seeing, I believe that we are having sort of an angst of spirit. I truly believe that we are. And it's very, very biblical. We, we so desperately need, so desperately need a fresh awakening. And that's everything this weekend is about. I believe that this that we'll have, this thing that is not working the way it used to work, will be for us, not against us. It will be a blessing and not a curse unless we sit back with it. But if we say, Lord, my same thing, the, the way I used to get up, have my same time, or do the exact, the exact same thing is not working the exact same way because it is not the exact same day. Has he got you in a holy dissatisfaction? By any chance, anybody notice it's just not going the way it used to go. Matthew 6, 7, and 8, when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they're heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. I was studying that just here recently, and I felt like God just penetrated my heart with the truth that sometimes He'll know what I need before I ask Him, and I'll get up and have my entire prayer time and never mention what it really is I need. He's going, I know what you need, but you had not said it once. I mean, I'm glad you said all that. That's good. But that really wasn't what you needed. What you need is that you feel bored and drowsy. And what you really need is for me to wake you up. Wake you up. We are so overstimulated in our culture. We are numb. You tell me today that what we're not really looking for from God is just to feel something again. To feel again. Chris told us this afternoon, we will live out of our passion. What we're passionate about, if we could get our zeal back our passion back. Nobody would have to tell us to share our faith. One reason we don't share our faith is because we do not have enough to spare. <laughs> what if we did? What, what, what if we did? Here, Lord, I need a fresh awakening. I need a fresh awakening. I want to feel my heart again. I want to feel it pound 
with passion for you. Lord, I need a fresh awakening. One of the mysteries of faith is that faith does not easily satiate. And I want to see if I can explain that. Because our souls are meant to be satisfied. Our souls can be satisfied within us, but faith is much harder to satisfy. And I'm going to tell you why. If you think of it in these terms. Because faith always believes for more than it sees. And that's why for some of you that really do walk by faith, you're not satisfied right now. Because you know good and well that what you're seeing, there's more than what we're seeing. Because your eyes continually look ahead. And you know this is not it. I mean, I'm glad of it. I thank God for it. But this is not it. This is not it. And wouldn't it be something for us to just say, instead of writing a new chapter of the emperor's new clothes, is that like, you know what, like, Lord, we're naked here. And we could stand to be clothed with some power. Amen? We could stand to be clothed with some power. Anybody but me? Because, like, I'm just done with anything less than that. I'm just absolutely done with anything less than that. Faith says what my eyes have seen of God in my generation is not enough. What my eyes have seen of the lost saved is not enough. I'm not seeing enough people saved in my conferences. I don't know about you. I'm not. I'm not. I mean, this is going to end because I'm telling you, I am ready to say I'm barren. I'm barren. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I'll own it, Lord. I want to see people saved. I want to see people saved. What my eyes have seen of the captive set free is not enough. What my eyes have seen of the Holy Spirit's power is not enough. We know there is more. We know there is more. I want to feel that fire burn in my bones. Our eyes have been dry toward a fresh move of God for too long. I believe that God pressed it on my heart that for many of us, the first drops of rain, this outpouring that he has promised to the thirsty and to the dry, these first drops of rain will come in the form of our tears. When was the last time you just wept before God and went, this isn't enough. I want you. I want to see you. I want to experience you. I want to know your presence with everything. When was a man or woman, when was the last time we just like shed tears for a lost world? When was the last time? Because our revival, our awakening, our downpour will start down our cheeks. I believe it with all my heart. It will begin with our tears. Listen, as long as we pretend we've got what we're longing for, when we don't, we will woefully be left to our lack. No one in this room is in severe drought than the one who cannot remember the last time you cried a tear for a broken world. That's drought. Beth, God bless you, and I know you watch the program. Love you. And Beth, you're so right. I actually shared earlier in the week uh, the compassion and concern of Jeremiah and Lamentations, where is it nothing to you all you that pass by? Is it nothing to you when you see all the little ones led away captive by the adversary? When you can see truth cast aside, essential principles discarded, so little real compassion for others. God knows we need broken hearts. And, and to those of you who watch life today, now, now please hear me. You're going to see a need for love right now. And you will be a part of the miracle that only love can produce. So I want you to watch closely, but ask God to let you see through his eyes and ask God to move your hands in harmony with his heart. Now ask him to do that. And then ask him to help you live that way every day. But watch very closely because this is something that you have an opportunity to respond to right now with a broken heart, but with an answer to heartache and pain and an answer to prayer. It's a long ways out here. To see these children work so hard to get down to the water only to find it's contaminated 
This isn't the way God planned it. Someone brought to my attention, though, why we do what we do. And they mentioned Proverbs 25, 25, where the Bible says, like cold water is to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. And I've thought about that verse and how the Bible says that on purpose, because God knows how much cold water, clean water, fresh water means to the soul, means to our bodies. And we have come from a faraway land to bring the good news to this village. And the good news is they're not gonna have to drink contaminated water anymore. But it gets even better. We're seeing scripture being fulfilled in two ways, providing clean water, just as the Bible talks about. But then we have a local pastor who's coming in here and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ and the gospel, the plan of salvation, that is gonna be a complete life changer. And with news like that, we want to bring that good news of clean water to villages just like this one all around the world for generations to come. Wow, that is so powerful. You know, we told you over the years that the various governments where there is incredible poverty and malnutrition and starvation and, and death by millions, that we had actually, according to those reports, we had saved the lives of more than 10 million children. Now, that's not missions reports or missionaries. That's what they hear from the national leaders where we're serving. But this is what our missionaries report. In those same areas where we have saved lives, we have had far more except Christ. I'm going to say something like at least 12 to 15 million have accepted Christ in the areas where we have just fed. Now, where we have given not just a cup of water, but wells of water, I don't think we've ever been able to tally how many people have been born again as a result of it. But the reports that come back to us many times is the entire village has come to Christ. I remember Franklin Graham telling me about the effect of the missionaries and outreach in Sudan where they were so persecuted they were driven into southern Sudan and the Christians assaulted. And he said, James, I'm telling you, these Christians there are just like the book of Acts. And we went with Franklin and we saw the glory of God on those children and on those families where missionaries had gone in and invested the love of God. Now, when we give water, it changes everything. We right now, with the leadership of God and the missionaries' insight, we're committed to drill 500 more wells in 15 nations. Now, when I say we, it's heavy on the we. Betty and all, I always drill a well because we ask God to let us do that. Let us every year, every time we have a challenge, Father, let us drill a well. And they were 3,600 when we started that. The cost rose to 4,800. It's still holding there. I pray it holds there for a long time. Many people, couples, individuals, companies, and churches, and Bible study groups will say, we look forward to drilling a well. Individuals, many of them say, it's the highlight of my life. Many cannot afford to give the 4,800, so you give a part of it, 1,200, 2,400, pray for others to join. But please hear this. Most of the support for the wells comes from gifts of $48 or $144. $48, 10 people have water the rest of their life. 144, 30 have it. Is there a level at which you can help? Would you live out the Holy Spirit commission and mission, the mission Jesus gave us to share the life of God, the power of God's kingdom right now by making a gift. Go to lifetoday.org, take your bank card, use it like a check, or you dial that number and use that card like a check and make the largest gift you can, please. Please do it. Give more than a cup of water in Jesus' name. We have some beautiful gifts to send you to help you in your spiritual journey and your spiritual growth. We love to bless you, and it is beautiful to watch you bless others with the love and compassion of Christ. Thanks for making that gift. Every day, millions of children are forced to make a dreadful choice, drink water filled with deadly disease, or die from thirst. No child should ever be faced with this decision. 
Mission Water for Life is one of the most exciting and viable demonstrations of God's love in the world today. Suffering can end because clean water changes everything. With your gift today, we can establish and drill 500 water wells for remote villages in over 15 different nations. Your gift of $24 will help provide clean water for five people. $48 will help provide for 10 people. $72 will impact 15 people. And $144 will help provide for 30 people for a lifetime. With your gift, we would like to send you James Robison's book, God of All Creation. Through his personal observations of animals and wildlife, James shares heartwarming stories and spiritual lessons of God's love and grace. With your gift of $100 or more, be sure to request Majesty. This beautifully illustrated book teaches you the blessing and significance of the names of God, including Jehovah Rapha, your healer, and Jehovah Jireh, your provider. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,200 to help provide water for 250 people, or a gift of $4,800 to help sponsor a complete well. And you may request our beautiful new Majesty bronze sculpture. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. From the bottom of my heart, in behalf of all those you express God's love to, in not word only, but in deed, thank you. I'm anxious to send you the God of all creation. If I can learn from a pet and all God created, we all can because the heaven and earth declare his glory. And I want to send you majesty, the names of God to say thank you and, and for you to rejoice in the power of God. And then the beautiful bronze that I think we will treasure because uh, God really creates the bronzes in real life that artists try to duplicate. We have a wonderful God whose love we can freely share. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're making it a part of your day to visit the stream every day, stream.org. Now, please understand what we're trying to do is help give people who care understanding of the times and how to wisely respond. I'm so thankful for every day I have to be able to claim his gospel. Tomorrow, meet the volunteer pastor of a humble church that is changing the world. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.